And he'd go, who? And I'd say, out. Get out. Yeah. What are you? I am an elitist. <laughs> <laughs> and proud. Good day to you one and all. It is I, Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again, the podcast beaming to you live and direct, well, not live, but direct from a swanky boutique hotel called The Mandrake here in London's Fitzrovia. Look at this exposed brickwork. It's just like my apartment. And actually some of the art choices that they've made are exactly the same as my apartment. Today, we're talking about elitism and uh, snobbery, I suppose, in the realm of music and art in general. We're talking about culture, um, societal conditioning, exposure to a certain type of music. We talk a lot about fast food and the differences between that and a more nourishing and diverse uh, diet, I suppose. But all of it, just give me a second, all of it is in the context of music. And now, some of the um, opinions that I espouse during this episode are not my own. It's really important to stress that, and I do stress it several times throughout this episode. I'm merely playing Devil's Avocado, in which I um, am pretending to be a, a music elitist, a music snob, if you like, and, and I'm, I, I, do, I am quite disparaging towards certain types of pop music. But it's a great chat and I think you'll really enjoy it. If you like this and you just want to hear the audio version, you can always listen to it on Apple uh, Podcasts or Spotify or wherever you normally uh, consume your audio podcasts. And in the meantime, please, to enjoy. Again. Good day to you one and all. It is I, <laughs> Justin Hawkins, and this is Justin Hawkins Rides Again. What, Jaws, well, Jaws of Victory. <laughs> Pitfalls of the music trade. And today we're talking about... Uh, help me. Elitism and taste. Elitism and taste. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't quite know where this is, how this is... Well, what? one of the pitfalls of the music industry... Snobbery. 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 Sounds like a fruit. <laughs> I love snobbery. Okay. Delicious. I uh, had snobberies on my porridge. Um, is it? Uh, Don't you think that there's a snobbery in the music industry and in music taste in general? Oh, yeah. I know what you're talking about. So yeah. then people sort of sniff out inauthenticity in a rock band, for example. No. I Not think that? when people are listening to music and someone goes, I like this band, and someone goes, oh, and it's like. But is that elitism? Is it, do, do people do that because of the town that they're from or something? No, I don't know what it is. I think it might be some sort of one-upmanship. You're going to have to explain this phenomenon. <laughs> what, what happens? <laughs> well, when you're trying to figure out your music taste, hmm. there's always, people go, oh, I know that, I listen to this band, and they're kind of oh, shown yeah. off, or I like this band, or my music tastes good, better than yours. Like, well, is that even a thing? Can sometimes, it be better? Sometimes people say, um, what, you're still listening to that? Uh-huh. You know, like if it's some, but not if it's something from years and years ago, but if it's something that's from, I remember somebody said that to me because I was listening to the, the Happy Mondays. <laughs> <laughs> In that, you know, their big, what was the big album called again? Is it the Pills Thrills one? I don't know. Um, but I was listening to that about five years after it came out. Oh. Only because I didn't listen to it when it came out, yeah. I rejected it. And then I came back to it and thought, oh, actually, this is good. And then um, somebody caught me listening to it and was like, God. yeah, are you still listening to this? Yeah. To imply that I'd been listening to it the whole time or, or, and I should have moved on. You see, uh, yeah. And then there is, sn- even with the darkness, didn't you find that people were a bit snobby? <laughs> they still are a little bit sometimes. Yeah. So what, but why would, they, why would they be snobby about us? Well, what were they saying? They were shit. <laughs> No, they weren't saying that. Not to my face, anyway. They, they were well, they thinking, were saying it to you. No, they were sort of feeling it. They were, sometimes, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes people were saying it. Yeah. Um, but but I don't know how that's snobbery. That's isn't that just like oh, I suppose it's because well, it's if like, your taste doesn't align with somebody else's, then they look down upon you. Oh, don't they? I guess right. when teenagers have it most, when you're like discovering your taste at fourteen. Give me an example of when someone was snobby about your taste. So I was listening to The Darkness <laughs> yeah. and everyone else was listening to My Chemical Romance yeah, or Elliot Smith mm-hmm. or I don't actually know what the boring people were listening to. I feel like they didn't even know what music was. 
People only find out what music is when someone tells them, though. Well, some people just they just don't care. They'll just listen to whatever is on the radio. That and that's their taste. Oh, well, I don't know if that is a taste or that's just they take what. So they if somebody said to you, "What's your music taste?" and you say, "The Radio One playlist." Yeah, you don't think there's any snobbery when people are talking about music. I just don't know if snobbery is the right word. What's the right word? The right word would be. I don't know. Because snobbery implies that there's, you know, like a some sort of class hierarchy. Yeah, it? there is, I think. You, you think so? Well, someone, if you met someone, let's say you're on a date. All right. Hey. Hi. And you go, what music do I listen to? Um, well, no, I wouldn't. I'd say, hey, you're so beautiful. have a seat. I like your um, perfume <laughs> <laughs> or whatever it would be. Nice you know. face. Yeah, I wouldn't lead with what Great music to listen to. Actually, it would be good to get the music taste out of the way. Quite so early, ask me. It? All right, what, what's, what kind of music is it that you like to listen so to? So I love Nicki Minaj Ooh. and I particularly love Beyonce. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Central Sea. I'll get my coat. Um, oh, what is that last one you said? Central Sea is those rappers we were watching. Oh, that? yeah, um, the number one. Mm -hmm. number, current UK number one Yeah, uh, Anne-Marie um, <laughs> Who's that? She's a pop star too I love Katy Perry yeah. She's my favourite mm -hmm. So why am I on a date with a nine-year-old? You see? Snobbery oh, this, we I've have fallen a into for, it We I've should have a button for snobbery snob. I'm a snob why, don't you, why are you judging me? Okay, go again uh, what, Because your music taste is appalling What does that mean though? Why, how can music taste uh, be bad? No, it's bad in the sense From, from It's bad it's what just both bad. does that mean? It's just music, it's isn't it, for everybody? No, 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 no. It's not just music. It's not just music. What well, the thing that you're consuming is the, the kind of music that you've just told me you enjoy listening to is the silty sewage pop music that's had all the edges rubbed off it. And there's nothing in there. But that I like to sing along to it. She's they're very talented. Have you heard her voice? Mm -hmm. I'm a Swifty. Yes, I've heard her voice. <laughs> I've heard it on so many occasions. <laughs> I'm a I'm a father of a, a ten year old space? girl, so I've heard it. Like, yeah, blank space. I actually think that's, that's a good song. One, that's yeah. a good song. Yeah. yeah. Do you like to shake it off? That's not my favourite one. Um, so you're but, saying that but I'm, I like it so up to a point. So you're saying I'm a point. child because of the music I listen to? No, I'm saying you're you have me? no. I'm I'm just observing that you have the, exactly the same music taste as my ten year old daughter. But is it because it's such good music it transcends ages? <clears throat> No, I think it's because um, I think I was I was reflecting on this the other day. I think that kind of music is devoid of anything that resembles surprise. It's the or the harmonic content of it is formulaic in the extreme. But rock music's the most formulaic. Yeah, and you like that, I don't think you? That's Every ACDC song sounds the same. Yeah. That's true. But you love that. Yeah, I do. So are you a child? No, well, in a way, is yeah. But I mean, you have to remember that ACDs <laughs> is not a good example because <laughs> the, the guitar player is actually dressed as a, as a 10 year old boy <laughs> you know, most of the time. Um, yeah, it's formulaic in the sense that this loud and exciting stuff happens just when you expect it to happen. So does Taylor Swift songs. Yeah, um, but it's not loud and exciting. But maybe I don't like loud m music. I can. But I suggest that that's that? true, yeah. Although sometimes when the bass drops in the club, yeah. when those, I don't know what kind of club, the youth club presumably, yeah. plays those songs <laughs> by those artists that you just listed, um, then it can be loud. You can and turn it, it up as loud as you like. But it surprises you in the right way. You're like, I'm listening to this song. Oh, there's a drop. Just like your guitar solo. That means there's a... Uh, Surprise in just the right way. Hmm. I don't know. I think um, don't guitar solos always go for the same amount of bars. Are as we? Well? What are we doing here? Are you being devil's advocado? Yeah. Mm, okay. Do you really think that I'm going to the club? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that's not what's happening. Um, all right, let's go again. Sorry, I'll try again. I, I won't be a snob this time. No, we're not. We're still going. Are we? Oh, wait, on the date? You mean? No, just try again. What, what's what kind of music do you like listening to? Uh, let me just check my phone. <laughs> Yeah, have a look at your <laughs> most recent um, listens on one of the streaming I'm look at the services. In protest of our conversation last night, I was listening to Led Zeppelin this morning because you made me mm -hmm. feel bad. Yeah. See? Snob. 
What? But, but how is it? What, what do you mean? Because you were judging, saying that I, I shouldn't be listening to certain kinds of music. There was an artist that you said you li- actually listened to and I couldn't Yeah, understand. but I told you why. I explained the thought process. Okay, I said it was familiarity and it was at the top of the Spotify. <laughs> But it was next to a very good band's music. But why wouldn't you, <laughs> why wouldn't you endeavour to familiarise yourself with something sometimes. that's... Because good. when you're stressed and driving, you just want something that it's like a weird... Is it like that weird like psychological thing where the, you just hear the same noise and it, it gets rid of the shit in your mind? Because so it's a little bit like when people get that stick and then they rub it around a bowl. <laughs> yeah is that what it is bow. it resonates in exactly the same way as all the other stuff yeah is in the and charts. then sometimes they might say something all right they can't be completely crap can they these people would be so upset these people think they're musicians making good music do they i think so yes i don't think that's true i think they are i think the people that write those songs know full well that what they're making is mcdonald's hamburgers i don't think so i mean one of them's only 20 so also, I don't know how she can write lyrics like that. How can she have had that many life experiences? <laughs> I don't know <laughs> I who you're talking the, about or what the... I think it's the 42-year-old's uh, co-writer who's yeah. venting against his exes exactly. <laughs> with this 20-year-old girl. Absolutely. Art. But is it, though? Well, he felt those feelings. So he? then it's a true artistic expression by... <laughs> she's a spokesperson <laughs> no. right so she's no, she the... doesn't realize that but okay well like if you look at the last song i, I think to... we need to say who the person look is look at the last about. song well it's the led zeppelin music band which i wholeheartedly approve of i know what was it was olivia rodrigo olivia rodrigo because we covered her songs this is what happens when we do the channel okay we cover a song mm-hmm. i have to listen to these songs then it gets in my head you don't have to drive long distances listening to it endlessly though i do I have to get it out. I have to finish it. Oh, so you wait for the fascination to to wear off, disperse, and and then then I might never listen to them ever again. That's why when you're like, "Oh, you're a fan," I'm like, "No, it's something else." But in the past, I would never have admitted it. But now, at my old age, (laughs) I don't care anymore. I don't care what people think. I do care that you care. So, do you think that that's how? um, I would have lied before. Like an artist, like Olivia, I would have lied to you. I think you should still lie, to be honest. See? You should go back to lying. Snob. Go, uh, What's wrong? Why are you judging me? You make me feel horrible as a person inside. I don't, that's not my intention. I want you to be rewarded by your listening experiences. I want you to listen to harmonic, harmonically diverse well, stuff with challenging... Now that you <laughs> mentioned that, I found an article mm, okay. that talks about this. And we'll get back to you being a snob in a minute. Please it do. brings people joy. M- me being a snob? No. <laughs> Certain music. Isn't that the most important thing? You're yeah. annoyed that their their success is bigger than the people that probably should deserve success, right? No, I think I'm annoyed. I'm annoyed in general. It's just my default setting, <laughs> and I'm, now that you're saying that, that's the, that's what I'm projecting no. my annoyance onto. My inner rage. Is just <laughs> but you must be really becoming inner. out of rage. I don't know. Okay, so your music taste is more to do with your culture than how your brain is wired. Okay. They thought that musical preference is rooted in the brain, but a study of remote Amazonian society suggests that musical tastes are of cultural in origin. If you're brought up listening to certain kinds of music mm. and then you go on a date with someone mm. 25 years later mm-hmm. <laughs> and then that person goes, oh, you're a horrible person because you like that. That's not that person's fault. All right, let's, let's flip it then. You ask me the question and then be a snob. Okay, what music do you like? Well, Dire Straits. Oh, so boring. <laughs> I know. They just I moan know. about this. It's not even like exciting or loud. Do you just have, plods you, along. You ever listen to Dire Straits properly? There's a little properly? twiddly dee 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 hey. phrases. Well, little... Which Dire Straits are you talking about? All of them. You don't know any of the <laughs> Dire Straits. You don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, but have you listened to my songs in depth? Olivia, Olivia Rodrigo, yeah. I listened to that one <laughs> that goes... And I immediately thought Elvis yeah. Costello, no, pump it up. Actually, that's a lie. I send it to you going, this girl rips off other songs. Mm. This, I know this song, tell me what it is. And then you told me. And I told you it was Elvis Costello, yeah. pump it up. Yeah. And, then, and there was another one that they... And I, I listened to something else on the next one along was something else from that era. You know. And then another one was Paramore. And I think what we said yep. was, okay, so... She might not have knowingly absorbed those riffs and then regurgitated them, yeah. but she's probably working with someone that does. Yeah, we know, know. we named him. 
Yeah, so we found out who it was, yeah. and that was somebody who was in their 40s, yeah. listening to presumably music of that era because yeah. he was he brought up in that culture, yeah. and then repurposed those riffs and those mnemonic kind of tricks and stuff into this pop music. Um, so she unwittingly is regurgitating stuff from, yeah, maybe. from his maybe culture. Maybe being used. Hmm. Or, yeah, I mean, whichever way But when I was listening it, to rock music, people didn't, didn't get it. My peers, they're like, that's shit. Mm. They said it was shit. Yeah, they didn't like it. Because it didn't, was it stuff that was in the key of C? They just didn't like it. They just thought it didn't, they didn't like it the way it sounded. Oh. Huh. What does that mean? It means they're wallies. <laughs> <laughs> that's what it but means. But why should there even be judgment when it's... Just enjoyment. No, I mean, I think if you really, really enjoy listening to, you know, what's in the prevailing radio stations playlist, then you probably consume music in the same way that well, Bobby might go to McDonald's and have a burger, you know. But then again, on a on a special night out, he might go to... Iguanas? You might go to iguanas and have like um, some fried plantains. Yeah, he might do that. Yeah, which is the equivalent of listening to jazz. <laughs> iguanas is not just so offensive to jazz. <laughs> well, not iguanas then. Maybe he'll go to like a Michelin star restaurant. Yeah, um, and he might say, "Well, I'll, I'll do the tasting menu." Yeah. Then you taste it and you go, "That doesn't taste like McDonald's. It's shit." <laughs> Give me a burger. Yeah. Like that, like the... Oh. I'm not saying this is bad, good or bad. I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. What are you t- <laughs> I must have conundrum here. <laughs> Some people have got shitty music Do you taste. Think That's should, why... Yeah, but they would argue it's not shit. But like I would it, argue that, that it's the honest. same as the McDonald's argument because the most popular restaurant in the world probably is McDonald's, but we all know it's the shittest one as well. But Beyonce fans, let's say. Beyonce thing. Okay, that's a bit of an un- anomalous really... one because she's undeniably talented. But at yeah. the end of the day, yeah. how is how is the how are the songs being crafted? I think she had twenty four songwriters in one. Yeah, so they're doing <laughs> a line each. <laughs> yeah. But does that it... matter? Well, you're going back. You're going too far back. We're talking about the finished product here that people are consuming. Not, yeah, not the process. Okay. So what is it about? Do you think people should be? Should... All right. Let's let's ask a different question then. You like listening to Beyonce. I actually don't. I, well, I'm pretending. Yeah, this, you're yeah I love the Beyonce. character that you're. <laughs> She's got that. I did listen to one song over and over and over again for six months. Are you being real now? Yeah, it's Which terrible. Which one was it? It's really bad. Which one? That one with Megan the Stallion. The what? <laughs> one about. Clearly, you see, I've deleted it now because I've exhausted it. I'm Ratchet. I'm of something. Fuck. Nurse Ratchet. <laughs> That was a good uh, Netflix. Yeah, I know. But what? <laughs> what um, uh, it was really bad. Anyway. What did she say? I'm wretched. I'm nasty. I'm wretched. Something. I'm wretched. It's yeah. a good word, actually. I approve. Yeah. Savage. Savage. Can we play it? Mm-mm. Okay. Under no circumstances. You wouldn't like it. How do you know? Because yeah. I know what you're like. What am I like? <laughs> I don't get it. You don't like stuff like that has hey. a beat in it. I like beats. I'm <laughs> fond of a beat. Do you want me to play it? It's good for me to rhyme over, yeah. I can only play 10 seconds at a time, so... Okay, play 10 seconds of it. I'm sure that's more than enough. Uh, see, this is an example of a song coming into my life and then I have to exhaust it to get out, get it out. Mm-hmm. That could just be a mental illness that I have there. I think it probably is. <laughs> I've never heard that before. I like that chord. Yeah, it's harmonically rich and diverse. It's just, it's almost jazz. It is. In its in the sensibility of the chords, anyway. Hmm. So you, you do. I approve. You're you're allowed that one. Yeah, that's okay. I'm not. Because I could, if you sing along to it, you don't know the words, you just go. You're not going to make it on TikTok very well, right? What? <laughs> That's your mind. I'm a TikTok. Well, not. I'm a moderately successful TikToker. 200,000. And, and counting. 20. <laughs> Thousand. <laughs> Next time we look at it, it's like 190,000. 
Have I just alienated the whole TikTok generation? No. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> they'll, they'll be all right. Okay. They'll be fine. So what we're saying then, if I don't like that, I'm a snob. No, it's the way you can dislike it without judgment, right? If I... But I think you'd think... I don't think I dislike it. It's all right. What do you dislike? Um, I don't... I wouldn't even say that... Because a minute ago you said... I mean, I'd choose, I wouldn't choose to listen to it. Let's put it that way. You said on the fake date thing that mm. I had the... My character had the taste of a nine-year-old child. Yeah. Well, it's exactly the same as a nine-year-old child. But also a lot of 30-year-old women listen to that music. Right. Um, are they... F yeah, the ones that... They probably got nine-year-old no. children as well. They had children at 21. <laughs> they're now 30 and they have to listen to it because kids listen to it. Yeah? Is that it? No. So why is it that why is it that a nine stroke ten year old child listens to that? Because her peers are listening to it. Why are they listening to it? Because their mother put it on. Is it because it's on the radio <laughs> all the time? Maybe. Do they listen to the radio? Everybody listens to the radio, whether they want to or not. Because even if you sort of struggle to put the tape in <laughs> the <laughs> CD or, or or plug in your thing it's when, not you, even when you start the car. Anymore. The, in, the, the initial what? <laughs> the yeah. Bluetooth connect. When you're waiting for the Bluetooth to connect and you start the car up, you've got the radio on, and something that sounds like that is probably going to be playing on it. Yeah. Because there are what? Say I don't know how many who how many people are in charge of a radio playlist. One. <clears throat> yeah. I met per, I met the radio station. one guy. The guy. Yeah. What's his name? Chris, I think. Surname. I think his name's Pine, isn't it? Hey, Chris Pine, how you doing? Uh, I think Chris Pine might be a famous don't actor. Don't forget, there's also. a new Darkness album coming out soon. Or maybe it's it's something Pine. It's either Chris or Pine. Chris Pine <laughs> was Captain Kirk <laughs> in the Star Trek reboots. Really? I don't think he's also the... I know, I met him, though. Right. Yeah. And did you say live long and prosper? Uh oh. Hmm. But, yeah. Missed opportunity. Um, okay, so... I think what bothers me is... I just I want to know why culture pushes us towards those things that all sound the same. No, well, we know it's commercial. Right. Makes money. But what is it? What do you find comforting in the sound of a thing like that that makes you want to listen to it over and over again? That beat your thing. inner nine-year-old the, the beat. It's those the repetitive moments in it. Me 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 that stuff. Yeah. Okay. And people like to sing along with stuff. So it becomes like a frequency in your. Like is a it, sound bowl, uh, like we do you think the, yeah, this is a sound bowl bullshit. But the um <laughs> but is it also is it is something is it something to do with the tempo that sort of taps into something mm -hmm. in a psyche? Because they always say like uh, occasionally I do get asked to top line a thing um you know for like one a dance person very very occasionally. And then that dance person is like, yeah, it's going to be 122 BPM. Yeah. Why do they, is reggae why do they know a, that? Why is do reggae they... always the same? What I don't know. I think it's, ska is always different because it's got a bit of punk in it. I don't know if reggae is always the same. It used to be done by humans, so it couldn't be exactly the same. <laughs> yeah, but there would be a, some fluidity in the tempo a, yeah. mapping, you know. I don't know. If you listen to... For example, UB40's Red Red Wine and then compare that to No Woman No Cry. Yeah. Is it the same tempo? Nearly. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, nearly. Hmm. Wait, so some people, you love Fergal Sharkey. <laughs> well, I admire his jawline. Yeah, but someone would go, I can't believe you would listen to that. Yeah, What's but that one you? particular song that I like <laughs> by Fergal Sharkey, yeah. um, I like it because it's a reinterpretation of a Maria McKee song. And it's just, he's reimagined it in a really cool way. And it's got a, and it's got a, like, it's not Pino Talampinos, where his name is playing the bass, but it's something, someone doing that kind of, you know, there's some clever stuff happening underneath the surface of it. But if people aren't musers and they don't understand. But they're missing out, aren't they? Yeah. But is that the snobbery then? Like you just think, well, why don't you look underneath the Because not everyone has and see every, what's the time to do everything. You know what I mean? 
You don't have time to like some people think about what you're eating or what you're listening to. Well, what if you could be really into fitness? You could be really into food. You could be really into arts and crafts. Do you think that somebody think who eats have, hamburgers like, every day and doesn't give a shit and just shoves them in their mouth and goes, "Oh, give me another hamburger"? Do you think they're they could be musers? Do you yeah. think they're nourished in the same way as somebody who goes, "Oh, let's have an artisanal sandwich with some avocado on it and stuff like that"? No, but they might have other things going on in their lives. Yeah, but you still you can still have something nice to eat. But isn't listening to music like not work, but you need to make an effort. We were talking about that yesterday, weren't we? But if you engage in the art that you consume, you enjoy it more. Yeah. It's actually you I feel sorry for. <laughs> I yeah, do. But they <laughs> but are you then you should have more I compassion pity you. <laughs> compassion rather than judgment. But judgment and compassion <laughs> they're, they're two sides of the same <laughs> coin, really, because you what you're really saying is you're doing it wrong. That's what you're saying. <laughs> yeah, you're doing it wrong. If you're listening to that, then you're doing it wrong. Yeah. You're doing something wrong. But then there's people who yeah. don't have peers. So I didn't have many much music growing up. So I struggled to find music. Well, didn't you have like a lot of that sort of Celtic um, Gaelic stuff? I played stuff with... the Irish flute. <laughs> <laughs> Is that one that goes out the side or out the front? I had, did both. That's the tin whistle. At the same time? <laughs> I could, like I, Michelangelo Batio of the... Two uh, tin whistles at the same time. But only the upper notes. <laughs> That's what that, um, that would be a good interpretation of um, that Beck song, wouldn't it? Two tin whistles and a microphone. Anyway, that wasn't <laughs> my music that I listened to. <laughs> As okay. in like my family didn't really have any, there, weren't, there was no music in the house. Occasionally in the car. So this is what happens. Uh, so then I was always viewers trying. at home. If um, <laughs> I'm not my character. If you, if you raise a child in a musicless household, they listen to there's the a darkness. good likelihood that they'll listen to uh, Olivia <laughs> Rodriguez on. Uh, oh. oh, Olivia Rodriguez. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Rodrigo. Olivia Rodrigo. <laughs> <laughs> on repeat for six months. <laughs> I didn't listen to it so for six months. So don't condemn your children to that. Make them, I tried. force them to listen to I music. I used to try hard to try and... F so, so when you were growing up, what did your parents play? My mum didn't play anything except maybe Leonard Cohen in the car, which is a, is Genius. A, is a tough one when you're 12. <laughs> Hence the mental illness. Got it, yeah. Yeah, okay. so <laughs> this man talking. Yeah. Not all the time. My dad played Credence once or twice. Yeah. And the Drifters. Special occasions? No, definitely not. And then I saw some CDs lying around. So I saw Michael Jackson on a CD. I didn't mm. know who he was. Which one was it? His story. Bad. Mm. And then Bette Midler. Is I, that I, the one that had Wind <laughs> Beneath My Wings on it? So I chose the Bette Midler one because I didn't have anyone around me to tell me which one to pick up. <laughs> Did you, you look at them and go, one? which one looks the most like me? I was a bit scared of the Michael Jackson <laughs> one. <laughs> So I had to listen. Yeah, to he does look imposing so I, on bad. He's got the one glove and the studded jacket. Bette Midler had taken me to the chapel. I'm oh. going to get married. The song. Oh, okay. I thought that was the Hosier song. She had Jolene it was on. Was Hosier's <laughs> "Take Me to Jail"? <laughs> is that like a cover of a Bette Midler? Yeah, and then I got to school and no one knew who Bette Midler was. So I was like, okay, I'm going to have to change. Well, they tack. hadn't seen Beaches. What kind of school is this? <laughs> and then I decided. Oh, I know what happened. Go I on. found a girl. <laughs> Who was 13. And you liked it? She liked horses and oh. I liked her. And I liked that she liked horses. So I started horse riding and okay. then she told me to listen to rock music. So I did. Ah, so that was peer pressure. No, it was peer uh, sharing. P oh, she was, peer to peer sharing. She was sharing. Like, like telling, me about, pre telling me about music. You mm -hmm. had loads of music in your house growing up. Yeah. It's not fair. It isn't fair. You're right. It's not fair. So I'm at, I, I should have been. <laughs> I should have not listened to any music. <laughs> no, someone should have given me some put some music in my house. Yeah. So then I was always trying to find music. I always struggled. So I think, like I know we're supposed to be talking about snobbery and elitism. Mm. I don't know how elitism plays into it because that's definitely hierarchical. Well, you were saying a minute ago that. <laughs> what was I saying? You're doing it wrong, and you feel sorry for them. But that's not elitism, is it not? No, that's just. Because elitism is like about poshness, and, and no, isn't not it? always in terms of class. I guess. Well, uh, so, but I think it's fair to say that you know some musicians you'd have to say they're elite musicians, yeah. like your Nuno Bettencourts, your Nate Woods, people mm -hmm. like that. And then you've got no disrespect to anybody, Olivia Rodriguez. Go. 
go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe a Rodrigo go. Uh, who else? Um, I don't know if Beyonce can play an instrument. She's a good singer, isn't she? Yeah, that's her instrument, isn't it? So. We can get rid of okay, she's so she's all right. But that's why I think she's anomalous because she's an impressive yeah, singer, isn't yeah. she? But, um, uh, and what a dancer! Take, I mean, come on. Take that. Take that. Boy bands. That would there would have been snobbery around that, wouldn't it? Do you remember when? Um, I think it was maybe it was just before COVID or during. I'm not quite sure, but oh, yeah. um, I used to be. Well, all of us used to be quite obsessed with looking at Tony Hadley's Instagram because it just seemed to be him getting drunk yeah. and saying, hey, how you doing? You're right. Nice to see you. Yeah, it's me, Tony Adley. Uh, today I'm in my garden drinking wine. It's bloody brilliant. And it'd, be, and it'd be stuff like that every day, really uplifting. And there was one way he said, <laughs> he said, he said uh, oh, just opening this box. And it was like an unboxing video. He was already drunk. It was great. Um, and he took the lid off. He said, oh, it's a bottle of wine from uh, Gary Barlow. And uh, <laughs> cool. it says on here, it's... Uh, it's a, it's a red wine, medium. And then he, <laughs> and then he goes, uh, look, it's got piano keys on the uh, on the label. Because, you know, Gary, that's typical Gary, isn't it? Because he's a piano player. He's got piano keys on his thing. And then uh, and he pours a glass of it and he goes, uh, <clears throat> yeah, medium. Yeah, I, I don't know what I'm talking about, to be honest. <laughs> it's really inspiring. But I think there's a certain... In boy bands, there's a... Mm. Take that mm. is another is another anomalous one, because one of them seems insistent on changing the narrative from fucking boy band guy to talented songwriter boy band guy. Yep, we know which one you're talking. By about. doing wine, wine, and putting piano keys on it to remind everybody that he wasn't just in a boy band; he was seated at a piano for some of their performances, yeah. playing. But you see, First inversion, but that's a good, normal But chords. that's a good point. Do you think he felt judged because he was in a boy band? Because I think he should feel judged people, by him, yeah. <laughs> just keep coming back I to hope he does, saying yeah. that you're not elitist in a snob. And like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's not elitism, though, is it? Hold I mean, on, I'm like, going to find the definition. All right. Elitism is, is to do with... Um, because he's probably like, I wish I was didn't have that. Elitism is to do with your social standing. And, you know, and but do you think boy, you, boy bands are lower in the social standing? I absolutely do, yeah. Of course I do. They're fucking dancers. So, so it is elitism. Of course it is. Critics portray him as an out-of-touch elitist. No, that's me. Yeah. Mm. Older men with an elitist attitude about music is one of the examples. And uh, here in... <laughs> well, that's actually, from here on in, that's how I'm going to... Can you put that in the bio? Yeah. Actually, of my, Older all man of my socials. who has an elitist Older attitude. man with an elitist attitude towards music. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> Because I think it's healthy. I don't. I just don't think nothing that nothing the silty sewage pop that's regurgitating good ideas from a few years ago, not even twenty years ago in some instances, that's not helping culture. And yeah, it's elitist to sort of suggest that we should explore more harmonically and and you know more diverse music because I think it'll make us better people. Yeah. But I you, mean, better people. But do you think the people who listen to don't it... Don't you want us to be better people? Yeah, I like... Yeah. <laughs> I like better people. <laughs> yeah, I do, I do. <laughs> I'd I like, like it if everybody I agree, better. I think better music... Yeah, but I'm trying to take the perspective of... Well, I'm only playing devil's advocate. No, I don't not. have these staunch, <clears throat> hard-line views Another about boy is bands. You know. Considered superior by others or by themselves as an intellect, talent, Okay, but you power. would never be able to listen to a guitar player like Nuno Betancourt and say that is... You, the only... The only opinion you can have about objectively yeah. about Nino Betancourt is that it's a superior but it's like jazz yeah they're it's like superior jazz. but it is like you that, don't yeah. like listening to jazz that much I, I don't mind it sometimes <laughs> I actually quite I've, I've enjoyed a few jazz gigs actually I quite like going to see it yeah because it's impressive but I don't get it I think maybe one of the reasons why I, I like it is because I don't get it but you wouldn't but if I listen to like Olivia Rodrigo I immediately not just get it I can predict what's going to happen next. I know exactly where they got the riff from. Everything about it is just but so formulaic and so familiar. That, and like, I can actually tell you where they've stolen the stuff from. That's not rewarding to listen to at all. And it doesn't help music in the slightest. No. But is that elitism? Well, some people were saying she's bringing, introducing those sounds back into. Yeah, but that's the parents' Patrick. responsibility or like our responsibility as the elder statesman of music to fucking 
force people to listen to it. It should be in the school curriculum. It should. Some people don't Think about like... some of the stuff they teach you, how to bake. Who wants that? I mean, what? fuck, who cares about that? Get them to listen to the good music. That would be in music class, but baking's in home economics are two different subjects. It's not in the music class, baking a pie. You're nitpicking. <laughs> Nit that's nitpicking. You like baked goods, so don't shit on them. Yeah, but I don't want to, I would never eat a cake if I was listening to that. What? <laughs> oh, I don't even I don't know, know what that sentence Yeah, but means. it's all about, you know what I mean. <laughs> I would never eat a cake. Life is a multi-sensory experience. Yeah. If we care about what we're eating, we should care about what we listen to as well. Yeah. But people don't often, or they think it is good. So you think elitism is good? Okay, if elitism, elitism is a good thing if it means that like a population doesn't eat unhealthy food. You know, so if we all oh, acknowledge the food. fact that McDonald's is <laughs> shit, yeah. then there'll be less I obesity agree. in the I world. I used to be really it? snobby around that. Yeah. Really snobby around people who went to McDonald's. And that's why you're healthy. And, right? that's, and then I find out people do go to McDonald's. Like Sometimes. You, when you have a 10-year-old child, one must at least do the drive through and say, look, look, child. Look upon these people. They will all be dead in 10 years because they eat here every day. That's not going to happen I to you. I would like some chicken nuggets. And then straight through there. <laughs> <laughs> I, might, I might do a courtesy purchase just because, you know, <laughs> I've taken up so much of the queue and, you know, it's just... And then I'll uh, <clears throat> feed it to the ducks. Poor ducks. But they need the extra fat so they float better. I saw that on the television program. They need to eat. But if you give them chicken nuggets, it's cannibalism. They're not chickens. And they're, but they're in the same family, right? <laughs> and are, there's hardly any chicken in those things anyway. If they just eat the batter, they'll be all right. Okay. Yeah. They'll be so all what right. normally do I peel the batter off, feed that to the ducks. Okay. And then um, what do I do with the rest of it? Eat it. I make a little sort of meaty <laughs> Jenga game. But the leaders of mindset yes. does stop me from listening to shit music. Like I shame myself out of it. That's a good thing, isn't it? Yeah, I don't like particularly like feeling shame. But it's an important emotion in a, <laughs> in a battery of emotions. <laughs> but now you I'm taking that. your side, saying losing is good. Yeah, okay, but you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to okay. be devil's advocado. <sighs> so... People will get upset. There's some of your fans, they listen. And I keep going to Taylor Swift. It's so annoying that she's just Yeah, like, but I listen okay. to Taylor Swift sometimes. Yeah, that's because you're listening to it, your daughter. <laughs> yeah. That's different, isn't it? But Ooh. you listen to bands like Accept. I, well, occasionally, yeah. Uh, on well, repeat. I, no, I do the same thing as you, but I get I get obsessed with... Um, but balls okay. to the wall. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, sometimes I'll hear something and it's just so... It's either daft or it's kind of shit in the way that I like things to be shit. And it's not elitism because I'm sort of celebrating how daft it is. One of the things I really like is um, that um, Thumpasaurus strutting song. Because yeah. I just think it's really... I like that whole album. Remember I sent you another song? From yeah. Me? It's a really good album to, yeah. to drive through. So I didn't get, I, I didn't get the get whole there, album. I, I just like that one song because it's sort of like they're not trying to do a hit. Like the piano playing is so shitty and they've left all these mistakes in it. It's really cool. Um, the way he sings like doesn't showcase anything of his voice and he's a really good singer. And it's, they're just throwing it away. And I just, I'm really into that. I just think it's great. I like your strip. Do you want to go strutting or strutting? You like my strip. Then let's go strutting. They're in the same crowd as Lewis Cole. Yeah, well, maybe that's another reason. Because Genevieve like. Arteddy, TD, is in the music video, one of the music videos. Yeah. So they're in that crowd of... They just do whatever they want. So those are artists that I really admire, and I think everybody should be listening to those, the people in that crowd, mm. um, because they're capable of doing amazing things and often choose not to. It's just really cool. It's such a... I just think they've, they've got the vocabulary and the skills to express just about anything, so it makes everything they say more important to me. Whereas if I hear an Olivia Rodrigo thing that sounds a bit like Elvis Costello, Pump It Up, the first thing I'm going to do is switch it off and listen to Pump It Up by Elvis Costello. Is it Costello. like a Greta Van Fleet thing? Yeah, but in the case of Greta Van Fleet, I think they, <laughs> um, I think they took on a lot of the criticisms that people levelled at them and they really kicked on and they expanded their influence base to include things like Rush mm. and stuff that's actually like... Uh, yeah. An interesting end of rock. But when people first started listening to them, their fan base were getting a lot of stick like, oh, these are just 
the same old. Yeah, but I think off Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Just go listen to Led Zeppelin. But one of the people that I really like on online is Jason Flom. You know that guy? He was in the music trade. I, I, I actually knew him from when he was at Atlant Atlantic. And he's one of those people that advocates for, like, uh, uh, what does he do? He does a lot of, like, people who are wrongly convicted, he helps them get out and stuff like that. And he's Wrongly convicted of what? Anything. Is he a lawyer? I think he is, yeah. But, um, I don't know, he runs some sort of charity that does all that stuff. But anyway, I, I, what I like about him is, like, he was big into um, Greta Van Fleet in the first instance, but always talking about their potential you know like he knew that they were just doing led zeppelin and now they're doing led zeppelin and rush and a few other things i really well. like that they when they list their influences they never mention led zeppelin <laughs> that's quite that's funny really actually good. well that muse <laughs> used to do that. anyone else no, but... <laughs> muse went a bit further than that when i mean, when um what did they do that Muse was slagging off Radiohead because they were they thought they were too closely influenced by jeff buckley which i thought was really ironic Ironical. I've got another question. Go on. <clears throat> Is music designed to soothe or to challenge you? Is it designed? Like, what's the purpose when you're listening to a song? What do you, what do you want from it? What do I... Uh, do you want to be soothed? It's no. like challenged? I want, I want music to be so challenging that sometimes I can't face listening to it. <laughs> See, that might I, don't, I won't even um, like if it's like oh god now I've got to experience these emotions I don't want to put this on and then it's so daunting the idea of listening to music that I'd just rather sit in silence and wonder what it would be like to hear a song and then sometimes I go like, okay put it on and then it's a frill ride and then at the end of it it's like okay I needed that thank you silence I went, I'd rather listen to nothing than no disrespect to Olivia <laughs> Rodrigo. Stop mentioning it. Yes. <laughs> no, really okay, well, not, maybe not her, but you know. Like, Just anything that you're not into. Anything. So you don't like, where some people might listen to music to be soothed like a baby. Cause yeah, I'm sure there's like. Um, so that might be the people that see it as something that makes them feel. Well, they're better nice. off listening to something like white noise, aren't they? Or brown yeah, noise. Yeah, but they or... don't want. To, well, I think. Because <laughs> they're not asleep. Like, I children. know, but they don't want to go to sleep. You're just saying oh, that, sorry, that sorry. I thought you were literally talking about No, I okay. mean, so you like music and you like it to challenge you. Some people don't want it to be challenged. It's like an escape to kind of feel soothed by life. Well, like slipping into a warm bath yeah. full of rehashed Elvis Costello <laughs> <Yeah>. riffs. <laughs> Sounds nice. <laughs> it does, I actually it? prefer, yeah, well, mm. you know, they put it on because it makes like them feel nice. Do you feel nice when you're listening to so, but, uh, uh, that? I'm going to never listen to it again. <laughs> I, I don't think you should. <laughs> okay. I think you've listened to it enough. All right. Seriously, go listen to Elvis Costello. The album that Pump It Up's on is called um, This Year's Model, I think. But you remember when I was... Uh, and it's really good. And then I used to have to do those long drives for the first time. And every time I'd set off, I'd text you and ask you to send me an album. Mm. Because I didn't know what to listen to. Mm. That was helpful. What did I send you? Um, oh, Accept. There was except, and there was, um, what's his name? Something Nash. Who? Nash. Nash. Remember? Nash. Johnny Nash. No? Yeah, right? Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah the reggae guy. Yeah. Mm. You just sent me that one time. The reggae. Yeah. <laughs> just so that was good. So I need, sometimes <laughs> I need someone to tell me what to listen to. Yeah. Because you don't know before you know. Well, I think that's what I'm saying. I think that if you have an opportunity to recommend good music to people it's like a, you're probably not going to say no, no you're not are you no definitely because the world is telling you to I listen would never to Beyonce tell anyone, the I world is telling you that you don't need you don't need I've never to listened it. to her music actually except for that song because it's TikTok mm. <laughs> and I forgot I, my friend was going to see her and I was like does she really have any songs and the look I got was I should you know, well because they, they're, they're, their their assertion was that they have lots of so songs. She, and she's the best ever i mean she is great but i was like oh which one are we talking about now beyonce ah, beyonce beyonce your favorite mm -hmm. yeah it's funny though because like um what's that one that was the crazy now one crazy now crazy now what crazy which one was it what? the the one that was really really <laughs> successful what's that song called again the one that goes 
That's the one. That's Beyonce, isn't it? Beyonce. Yeah. Yeah. And um, <laughs> but then, what's the best thing about that song, in your opinion? What do you like the most about it? If you had to pick a thing about that song, you like know. the most. <laughs> I don't know. The, 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 the bit. <laughs> I don't know. Can I tell you what my favourite bit is? It's a ride symbol pattern. You know the thing I'm talking about? And it's really exhilarating to listen to. Um, but it's just a sample lifted from a yep. funk record, mm -hmm. which is way better. Mm -hmm. So is that her repurposing the funk record in mm -hmm. order to educate her fan base and bring people into this whole other world of music that is it a gateway to that or is it just Beyonce taking something that's great saying some na 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 na, -na stuff over it and making it hers because if whenever you hear that it's like oh yeah it's Beyonce now yeah. I can't even name what that funk record was I heard it a little while ago and I was like oh yeah that's where it came from that's cool but I never endeavoured to find out who that was I'm ashamed of that should be. I am. I don't think it's uh, she's being a gateway. I think she's taking it uh, and repurposing I don't it think her aim to is benefit to be her career and taking something that's really cool that, that, that somebody else did, saying na 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 over it and making it. But a then hit. you're entering the world of sampling and hip hop and really. Ah, yeah, but hip hop's a different application. Why? Because that's what uh, it was break beats, wasn't it? In the olden days, you'd have a funk record with a section called the break beat, and that's when you give the drummer some. You let them have a few bars to express themselves. That's the bit that you loop, and then you rap over that. It's fucking Whenever awesome. they sample other artists, <clears throat> right? Always, yeah. Yeah, but that's, that's what the she's art doing. form. That's like the collage. That's what Beyonce's doing. No, she's and Doja Cat. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> so she's she's number one in the chart. I just looked. Oh. She has a sample from this woman in the 60s, I think. Mm -hmm. And then they interviewed the woman. She's like, Is it the best bit of it? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Wanna play it? Yeah, play it. Walk on by. Who wrote that song? Pause. Burt Baccarat. Come on, guys. What's wrong with you? It's a Burt Bacharach song. Okay. He's one of the greatest songwriters of all time. And he died last year. Yeah. Poor man. <laughs> poor man. Poor man. Well, he wasn't poor. He was fucking <laughs> loaded. Unbelievably rich man. Wait, wait till the rap comes in. Okay, here we go. Let me guess. <laughs> you like? Do you think she makes the song better? If you see me walking <laughs> down the street and I start to cry. This time we meet, walk on by. I'd rather listen to that. It's the best bit. That's that elitism, isn't it? I'd rather hear a melody written by Burt Bacharach, sung by Dionne Warwick, for example. But then they're like, what about new people? Fuck them. <laughs> That's what I say. F*** them. They haven't got... Oh, Burt Bacharach had more talent in one of his eyebrows than there is evident in that whole recording. Deny. <laughs> <laughs> Deny it. That's what I mean. <laughs> that's not elitism. That's objective realism. That's like Can me. it be objective? Yeah, of course you can. Can it? Of course you can. Can it? Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> bitch. Saying bitch and then I some see. other stuff in a, in a sort of cutie voice over the work of Burt Bacharach, which is amazing. But some people like bitches. I know they do. I, I do often. <laughs> I do. I suppose it's about context, really, isn't it? <laughs> do you want to contextualise that? <laughs> yeah. Like if it was bitch and, uh, you know, and then you go... <laughs> if it, I think if, like, if at least there's kind of... Like maybe it's a, a cute song about a puppy, you know. Like a female puppy. Yeah. Or call? something like that, you know. Yeah. Yeah. There are some good songs that are written about people's pets. There's um, All Dead, All Dead, All the Dreams We Had. That one, that's about a cat oh. that showed up at Brian May's house and then he spent a, a summer playing Why with a cat and then it this? died. Well, they will die eventually. See, there's and there's a lesson in there as well. Don't get too attached. Mm. Grief is the price you pay for love. 
That's, yeah, all of those themes are explored. <laughs> 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 and it wasn't just someone going bitch over the top of uh, Bert Bacharach maybe she's got an agenda I expect she has yeah maybe someone's crossed her maybe maybe it was Bert Bacharach yeah <laughs> Bert Bacharach double crossed her we find that she was left her for dead and uh, she survived and then said bitch over his recordings did that come out after Burt Bacharach died, actually? Well, did the, did like the estate of, Right, so the, but the estate of Burt Bacharach have allowed that sample. That's what disgusts me. He's not even alive to fucking defend himself. Don't you think that's horrible? Oh, melody. Mm. I like that bit. That's cool. There you go. Yeah, yeah nice. Okay, some of it's good, actually. There you go. I think I was just a bit shocked by the bitch thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a strong way to start a song. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I should <laughs> try that. No, then, you should try it. Yeah. I mean, get your hands off my woman's. Yeah, it's got cunt in it, but I should have done it at the top. Yeah. Get your hands off my woman. <laughs> can't. Like a real South London. Yeah. Give it that. And then oh, maybe we'll just have like... Um, <laughs> what, what do you think the Burt, should we do an, a social experiment? I'll write to the Burt Bacharach uh, yeah. estate mm -hmm. and I'll say, I'd like to use, um, do you know the way to San Jose? Do you know the way to San Jose? And then just start, start the rap. Yeah, it could be in response to that. Yeah. Oh, no, just, I'll just double down on it and say, yeah. I'm enjoying, what's it she's saying? I'm enjoying being rich and yes, it's going to my head a little bit, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to have a good time tonight by painting the town red or something. I could do that, but start off with and it'll be, do you know the way to San Jose? Yeah. It's a tried and tested formula. Yeah, I think so. And there's a win to be had here. So you're half elitist, I guess. But well, I keep having to take the other side. No, I don't mind it when there's a... I don't know. I don't mind any of it, really. I think I'm actually just... I'm playing devil's advocate. Just to establish what's happening here. He's not playing devil's These advocate. aren't necessarily our true views, are they? I mean, we're, we're representing two yeah. opposing... Mm -hmm. um, just in the name of open dialogue, you know. I think we're probably in agreement that some stuff's good... Some stuff isn't, yeah. and it's all a matter of opinion. And you can't be objective about that thing. It's it's oh, always going to be really? subjective, right? Hmm? <laughs> unless, you're, <laughs> unless you're actually <laughs> living in the real fucking world. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. As you're saying, <laughs> I mean, I, I mean, you, you, you can't be, you can't be object, you can't be. You, everything's subjective, really. Then it's like, um, because you know, and I know this because some people listen to that and they actually think it's good, so it must be. <laughs> <laughs> Which proves to me that it has to be subjective, you know. Yeah. Mm. But some people do love Doja Cat. But the, like, uh, evidently, if Bobby would have come no, in I've, and put Doja Cat on while real, we were set, setting yeah, up, that wouldn't surprise me. He's like, I've got me. this, love this new album. It's yeah. really relaxing mm -hmm. and soothing. And then I'd say to him, you know, that's a Burt Bacharach sample, and right? then he'd, and he'd go, who? And I'd say, out, get out. Yeah. What are you? I am an elitist. <laughs> <laughs> and proud. I don't care. Fuck it. People need to be educated. You can't just listen to that and go, oh, that's Doja Cat. It's not. It's fucking Burt Bacharach with someone saying bitch over the top of it. Do you think it. people confuse good with familiar? Um, or conflate. Is conflate the right word? I don't know. <laughs> Is it the right word? It uh, might not be. Confuse. Conflate. I think... Um, Familiarity yeah. should never be <laughs> a barometer for quality. <laughs> it's just like. But do you think that's you know because our you're brains used to... are like maybe our brains are fooling fooling us, tricking us. Our well, primal yeah, brain. but I think everyone gets used to a certain life experience. Like if you're if it rains every day, and you're familiar with that, you think, oh, rain. no, you definitely Yay. don't. Oh, some people do. I'm from Ireland. We don't like it. Well, I suppose that's my argument. Then. Like, if it, if it rains every day and you're familiar with that, that doesn't make it good, does it? No, but in music, do you think people like... That's why certain artists are rehashing the songs of the past. I think... Um, I suppose if you're just out, outright using a sample of a... I mean, that's... And the Valerie one, the Steve Winwood Valerie. 
It's got like Van Halen synthesizer stuff in it. And it's a really complex arrangement. It takes ages to get to the chorus, and then it's a huge payoff, and it's really cool. Then you hear a dance number, oh, they, which yeah. has just taken the Valerie part, and it's like, fuck off. Yep. I hate that because it's just like looping a few bars that is considered the hook. But you, have, you when you listen to the Steve Women one, you have to really earn the hook. It's a beautiful song. It takes ages to get to it, and it's like, but that's wow. what I mean. It's worth. And the journey is just like, and you know it's coming, and then when it comes, it's like, ah, oh, incredible listening experience, fantastic. And then you get a synth riff after it, which sounds like Jump by Van Halen. It's amazing. It's such a great song. But then they made it into a dance song that almost killed it for me. Yeah, I remember it. Horrible. Dance They're producers. They need to fucking die. They need to die. See, that would upset some people, wouldn't it? Yeah, I don't care. Sorry. <laughs> They're f***ing wankers. <laughs> they just take the best bit of a song, loop it, put a drum beat on it, and then dance to it while they pretend they're f***ing fiddling with stuff on their DJ consoles. They can fuck off. Sorry, I've had too much coffee now. Um, anyway, I'm only playing devil's advocate just He's to re-establish advocate. the fact that I'm uh, not necessarily <laughs> believing any of these things that I'm saying, but it is important that I represent this side of the argument yeah. because you're I'm representing doing the opposite. The... Yeah. I only listen to elitism. It. Only it listen can only to be it. bad. Look at that word yeah. itself. It sort of means hierarchical societal standings, and it, there's nothing. No, n- nothing. I've in never that listened that to pop music. I just listen to intricate jazz. I don't mind pop music though. I think some. I know you love it, really. I do. We're I like Fergal Sharkey. I like Dead or Alive. Please pick someone like in the a... last ten years. <laughs> it's still pop music. I mean, it's just not popular anymore. It hasn't been popular for thirty or forty years, <laughs> but it's still pop in a way. Anything that was produced by Stock Aitken and Waterman, I love that. Um, what else do I like? This pop Backstreet Boys, and Sync, Justin yeah, Timberlake. I, I think all that stuff. Nelly Furtado. After my time, Natasha Bedingfield. Yeah, why not? Yeah, I like all those. <laughs> Natasha Bedingfield writes songs, proper songs. Yeah, I think. Um, Unwritten. Ironically, I was thinking. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yeah, that's the one. That's the one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, like that one. Um, who else do I like? Oh, from the pop world. Okay, if I had to choose some pop stars that I think are really good. Alive. That's more difficult. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, you know, like anything from the Bee Gees. Uh, do you think they would have been disparaged by Elitist back in the day? Yeah, I think so. Some because they're good looking virile, similar-looking <laughs> siblings. I mean, obviously, it's kind of like you, you're going to... I think there, there would have been a tendency to probably <laughs> reject them as like the Osmonds or something like that. But there were, there were so much more. So much more. And the Beatles. Some people hate the Beatles. Yeah, but A lot of people <laughs> hate the Beatles, don't yeah, they? They think they do, but they don't have a fucking clue what they're talking about. But like, they do, don't they? they, think if, they well, if they, okay, if there is, say, for example... The majority of people hated the Beatles and they think, yeah. let's go back in time. Let's make sure that the Beatles never existed. What would music look like today? The new Beatles? What? Just someone else who's doing it. <laughs> <laughs> if Paul McCartney and hadn't done all that have, stuff, yeah, there'd, there be, there'd have been, be no music. No, there'd there be must, no pop music. There must have been another person in the billions of people that... Yeah, but, but it if wouldn't you believe be as in good. Songs it being, wouldn't be as good yeah, as it is now. You say songs were in the ether. So someone yeah, else would are. have caught it and made no, it. it. There'd be no music and then suddenly somebody would invent AI and then AI <laughs> would pull the songs out of the ether. Maybe. Yeah. That's if they're connected to the ether. Well, it's, that's it. eventually they'll connect AI to the ether. <laughs> that's, that's the next phase. That's what people are really worried about. Yeah, I don't want to get into the collective consciousness. Mm. Because I think that's the one thing that we can do as humans is we can pull stuff out of the ether. So even if the Beatles went around, around someone else asses. like... The Chanos. <laughs> the what? <laughs> they, they come along and do it. <laughs> Sands at you. <laughs> okay, what year is this? This is the night. 1979. 1994. So the Chanos come along. Mm. They write, oh, darling. <laughs> but there isn't like. Um, in a grunge but there style. isn't a music industry. <laughs> there isn't like. Oh, I mean, without the Beatles, what would they be? They still have the Rolling Stones then, right? Yeah, but. These are all the people who made it big. 
There's people making music all the time. So there could have been people making music as good as the Beatles and have done it and it's never been heard because they never found their audience because they were never given the opportunities. So it's not like the Beatles were the only ones doing that stuff. They just were the only ones that were heard. Uh, is that the prevailing theory on the Beatles among people who don't like them? No, I just think that there's so many artists that are never seen or heard. People making great stuff behind closed doors. Yeah. There's no internet. What if you're really bad at socialising and just no one liked you so they yeah, listen yeah. to your music? Yeah, that's true. Or you had like crippling anxiety. Yeah. Well then, put the guitar down. But you make great music. Get some therapy. Huh? <laughs> Back in the 60s. <laughs> 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 don't think they talked about feelings and therapy as much then. Yeah. No, but I also don't think that the kind of anxiety that you'd have as a musician now existed then because I think that the Beatles is one of the reasons why their mania became a phenomenon in the first place. Like nobody cared about music in the same way without Elvis, Beatles and the Stones and stuff like that. That's when people started to realise that there was like mania and fanaticism and all that kind of stuff. It's like they, they didn't just invent that kind of pop music but they all of the sort of peripheral phenomenon around it is is actually they're part of the reason why that exists people screaming at concerts that, that, that wasn't happening in, in and there was a classical change, music was change it? in culture just in general like yeah the 60s but they are, they spearheaded that by having cool haircuts what if and they were their heads in they'd been born 30 years prior what what if they'd been born 30 years and all of that stuff would have happened in the 20s but they weren't but there was a my math isn't quite <laughs> there was a cultural, 30s, sh sorry. cultural shift in general when it came to like because it was post war freedom and sex and stuff anyway mm. which might lead to the mania it all kind of happened at the mm. right moment right time women and so yeah so if that hadn't if the Beatles hadn't occurred but then you can't just limit it to the Beatles because you've got the Doors as well that's part of it too isn't it the Beach Boys to a lesser extent um who else you got? Elwood Pretzel, Buddy Holly. The list is nearly endless. I've done five, four, three, <laughs> two, a no. few. But yeah, you think it's post-war liberalism and all that <laughs> sexual awakening? I think it all helps. Uh, hallucinogenic yeah. drugs. Yeah. Vietnam. Freedom. You think it's all that stuff? Freedom of expression. Like Elvis's lower half was censored in Ireland. Mm, rightly so. They weren't allowed to show him dancing because mm -hmm. his hips were too fluid. Mm. And it was considered inappropriate for the Irish society. Mm. Well, they thought they were mocking them because they're all... Sorry, they thought they were mocking Jesus. No, they thought, <laughs> they thought he was mocking like um, the way um, every Irish person wobbles out of a pub at half past 11 in the evening. It does look a bit like that, actually, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> Probably can't put that in. Yeah. Why? Because I'm mocking the Irish. Race? But just to <laughs> say that all of these racist and elitist views are not my own. I'm just um, playing devil's avocado, so. Yeah. And I love the music of Olivia Rodriguez. It actually Go. has... <laughs> what? <laughs> <laughs> Who be on about that? Because it has an eerie familiarity to some of the songs that I grew up It tricks up you. I think it's tricking people. It's not tricking me. No. <laughs> I don't feel not you. duped by it in the slightest. Yeah, you think it's... But is it in the same way that... Um... Do you think artists should go, if you like my music, you should listen to my influences? <laughs> but that's one of the questions that you always get asked in interviews, isn't it? Who, yeah. who are your musical influences? <laughs> really funny if she goes Elvis Costello especially that song Pump It Up <laughs> it's good that Paramore got the writing credits on the song she's basically mm. ripped off did she? Did they have to go and ask her for those what's the rumour uh, yeah I think they I think Paramore may have approached her after the song mm. they got 50-50 it's not bad is it yeah and Taylor Swift she ripped off she had to pay Taylor Swift for yeah, there was somebody that, um, I always talk about this one because it's brilliant, and somebody did an unlicensed sample of Stevie Wonder, and I'm not quite sure which Stevie Wonder song it was. Um, somebody in Stevie Wonder's camp recognised the sample, and it, they found out it was a sample, blah, blah, blah. 
Um, and so the, the artist that sampled Stevie Wonder was obliged to pay more than 100%. Oh, yeah, I think you did. So they were like praying it wasn't a hit because it would have completely Why bankrupted. did they, is that allowed more than 100%? I think if you do an unlicensed sample, that's a bit you're intense. fucked. You know, you need to ask permission for those things. And that's a bit intense. Yeah, it was. But justified, I think. So in conclusion, what we're saying, I, my position, which I was adopting uh, in a, well, we were, we were acting out yeah. the, uh, the opposing views, weren't yeah. we? Yeah. So when you meet someone and they tell you their musical influences, should you be more or less judgmental? Take into I think it's important take to into, ask. Take into consideration what, what, their okay, history, well, uh, their family history. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's going to be societal in life. influence. If they're like an Olympic athlete, maybe they don't really have time to explore music in depth. Okay, I'm an Olympic athlete. What, ask me what my favourite song What's is. What's your favourite song? Chariots of Fire. Ask me what I like about it. What do you like about it? Um, it just reminds me that um, even when I'm running in slow motion, I can look heroic. And I like the, um, I like the uh, delay on that... Um, does it not make drums. you run slower? It probably would actually. I use it to warm down and up. <laughs> okay, so and in conclusion, no, um, elitism. Wait, wait, hold on. What, when you meet, should you be less judgmental, or is it a good thing to be judgy? I think when somebody tells you their musical influences, you should consider the societal uh, influence that you that should do. Maybe there should maybe it pays off. You know when people have those debates of whether music's good. But Has then the whole guilty pleasure thing. Remember Nate was or who was it that you asked? Hmm. Richie Cotton was it? No, did you, did you Pat, ask? I think. Oh, Pat, and he goes, oh, "I've no such thing as guilty pleasures." Yeah. But you don't think that's true? No, I don't think anyone should feel guilty about what they're listening to. But they should just listen to better stuff. That's all, because it's good for all of us. You know, if like musicians like Nate Wood were more well known. Yep. You know, and the stuff that he likes and the people that he the circles that he moves in, people should listen to that. What if you listen to all of that stuff? Good for you. I applaud you. And I think no, but like you're crappy, doing something like, good for like humanity. Like pop and that. That's what I do. I listen to a bit of pop. I told you. I like um, <laughs> Strawberry Switchblade <laughs> from, from 1985. Um, How old are you? Joe Dolce, Shut Up Your Face. That's a pop song from 1983. And then uh, I really enjoyed... Um, this Old House by Shaken Stevens, because it had a bit of a rock and roll edge, but it's still pop music from 1991. So I just, I've really got my finger on the pulse when it comes to pop. And I, can, and I feel like I recognise where some of those influences come from. The most like, it's always nostalgia, actually. When you think about Shaken Stevens' pop records, they were 50s nostalgia. Mm. Um, Olivia Rodrigo. Every... I got it right. Yeah, well done. <laughs> 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 I was actually trying to get it wrong that time. Yeah. It's gone in. Um, it's nostalgic for a certain period of the 80s, I think. And a little bit of, like, noughties rock. Only in the aesthetic. I think the and riffs well, are Paramore familiar. is noughties, isn't it? Oh, noughties. Yeah, sorry, I thought you were going to say 90s. No. Okay. Um, who else is we talking about? Uh, you said another band before. Can't yeah, I forgot. Anyway. It doesn't matter. We... So elitism is good, but you shouldn't feel shame. Yeah, I think it's like, Make listen sure to whatever you want. But if somebody tells you, you know, I think what, what we're saying is, if somebody says to you, I like this band, and you think that that band's shit, and you're probably right if you think that, then try and understand why. Maybe ask why. Yeah. What is it about that artist? Because then, then perhaps they might say, like you said, because I find it soothing. It's like running water. Yeah. And it's whereas to me, it's like nails running on a sewage. blackboard. Yeah. Yeah, there's two different types. There's some music I listen to to stimulate, some to switch off. Enough about your sex life. And on that bombshell, <laughs> we'll see you next time for another <laughs> no, episode. No, don't Justin, end on that. <laughs> Justin Hawkins rides again. The Jaws of Victory, Pitfalls of the Music Trade. Um, elitism and taste yes well I hope you enjoyed that episode I know that we covered I don't know we kept covering and then recovering the same ground but really it's an interesting topic and I suppose it's about I suppose it's all about 
I don't even want to say guilty pleasures because I don't believe in that concept. But anyway, there's more to be discussed. Use the comments section below if uh, there's anything that you want to pick up on or any remark you'd like to make. That's what comment sections are for. Um, you can also listen to this on Apple or Spotify or wherever you normally get your podcasts from. And I'll see you again next week for another episode of Justin Hawkins Rides Again, The Jaws of Victory, Pitfalls of the Music Trade, and whatever the subject happens to be next time. Love you guys. See you on the ice. Okay.